can you explain to the plumber in my district why it is that we tax him at a higher rate, twice a higher rate, as we tax uh, some people in Wall Street? Warren Buffett asked, why is it that we tax him at a lower rate than a secretary? Uh, and we all know the answer. It was a rhetorical question. It's politics. It's the fact that uh, these guys make big campaign contributions and that they buy lower taxes. Uh, that's part of the investments they make. Wall Street investments in the real sector were disaster. That's why we had the crisis. But their investments in politics have paid off very well. Uh, so I think uh, that, that, that's uh, why he stresses this. Now, the reason he stresses a global capital tax is that he is very aware, particularly in the context of Europe, that if you tax, impose a tax in one country, money moves around. And this is really another flaw in the structure of the Eurozone, that they were not aware conceptually that uh, if you have a single market, you don't have enough, that you need to have progressive taxation at the level, at a high le higher level. Um, I had developed a theory of local public goods where I emphasized this uh, in some work I published in the 1970s, that if you have a, a, a system of fiscal federalism, uh, the burden of redistribution has to lie at the highest level. And as you have more globalization, that's why you need, if you're going to get these redistribution, you have to do it at a high level. It's going to be very difficult, or I would say impossible, uh, in the short run. But if Europe and the United States wanted to impose a progressive tax and to tax capital, they could. It's about politics, it's not about what's feasible. In the case of the United States, it's easy because we impose tax globally. Uh, American citizens are taxed on their income everywhere. And Europe could do the same. So this is a political decision, not an economic decision. In the case of corporations, things are even worse. And, and the good news is that people are beginning to wake up to this, that Corporations, unlike citizens, have no citizenship and have no loyalty, uh, absolutely no loyalty. And you've seen that in what we call in the United States tax inversions. Uh, American companies have said, oh, if we relocate to some other country and it saves us tax, uh, the fact that we're all Americans, that has no, no uh, consequence. The fact is, uh, we want to minimize our tax. And what's so remarkable is that this, the, this systematic avoidance of tax within the legal framework, which they created through their politics, so, but th that, that avoidance of tax is even done by corporations whose very success depends on using technology that was created as a result of investments by the U.S. citizens. So you have companies like like. Apple and Google actively engage in tax avoidance. I mean, Apple, you think of it as an American corporation. They claim that all their profits, all their innovation is due to a few people working in Ireland. And then they take advantage of what is called the Irish double play, not even to pay tax, very much taxes in Ireland. It's a total lack of civic responsibility. This is not about corporate responsibility. This is minimal civic responsibility. They, they would not exist without the investments in technology, without the internet. They're willing to take. They're not willing to give back. And I think, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't rise to the level of turpitude, a uh, moral turpitude of our banks, but it's not far below.